Hey guys, welcome back to Jay's to-do list. My laser tube went out. It's still kind of working, but I got to get it replaced. So I thought I'd take you along with me and I'll show you how I'm going to replace the laser tube. You might say, Jay, how do you know it's your laser tube, not the power supply? Well, I'll get into that here in a minute. I'll show you at the end of the video uh, how to determine if it's the power supply or the laser tube. But now let's just get jump right into it and I'll show you how to replace the laser tube. First thing you're going to want to do is just unplug the power. You need to be really careful because your laser tubes hold a charge just like a capacitor. So you might sh run your laser and then turn it off and then it could it could give you a little zap even with the power off. You want to make sure you unplug it and then wait a good 12 to 24 hours for that power to dissipate and go away so you can get to it. All right, we're back here behind my laser and this is really, really difficult to hold the camera. <laughs> okay, it should go without saying, but you need to uh, unplug the machine. There's enough electricity in these machines. If something were to happen and you get electrocuted, there's enough there to stop the heart or mess the heart up. So just unplug it, be extra safe. Okay. Go ahead and open the back. Expose your laser tube. Lucky enough to have a removable door. Remove your door. Okay, so this is the Reesey tube. You'll see there's a screw, screw up iron here holding your main ground line on. This little screw right here is a Phillips head screwdriver. My screwdriver is too long to reach in there. You could get one of those really small ones, or you could do this. Go ahead and take off the mounting brackets. You only need to take off one, one screw of the two screws, assuming you have the same style as me. Oh, there's one way down here. Now you'll be able to rotate the tube. Exposing the ground line. Now the big scary one, the hot line, or the high voltage line, whatever you want to call it. You see the rotation trick? This is a Reesey tube, which has a, a screw on it, opposed to what I'm going to put in as a cheap off-brand 10 high tube. Sorry guys, I'm looking at the screw, so we'll just loosen that screw. Okay, now we're going to unhook the water lines. There's going to be about a cup of water inside your tube. You could be prepared to catch it, or you could just let it leak all over the place. Should probably catch it. But it's gonna leak all over the place on me. So pull this one off, which is the outlet. Most of it's draining back into the cooler. We lift this side up, drain it back into the cooler. Let's lifting this up. You still might lose some water, but the majority of it's gonna go back into the cooler. All right, sounds like it's done. So let's take off the uh, hose on the other side. Now just gently pull the tube out. Okay, so I bought a cheap 10 high tube last year. I put it in, it was a little underpowered to what I'm used to, so I decided to make my backup tube. My good Reesey tube is done. It's been on there for about eight months and I've got probably close to 2,000 hours on it. I'm gonna go ahead and take it out. It's still kind of working, but not really. And I'm going to put this 10 high tube in, which works, but not quite as powerful as the Reesey. And I ordered myself a Reesey. When it gets here, I'll switch her out again. But uh, this will get me back into business. They go in a little differently than the Reesey tubes, as you'll see. This is the side with the ground. That's where the laser beam comes out of. You see how nice and shimmery, shiny it is. And then the other side, hopefully I don't drop it. These are quite expensive. I think this is about $600 is blocked off right here. This is your high voltage terminal on a 10 high. That way. Just gently set it right back into the brackets. Gentle, because these are glass. Right. All right, now I just want to know on the placement of this thing. You see, yeah, you can see it. So this is mirror number one, and this is your laser tube. Your laser tubes are 
should be the same diameter. If the same diameter, very little adjustment, if any adjustment is going to need to be need to be made on your mirrors. They should be in alignment. If they're not in alignment, check my video up top here and I'll show you how to put them back into alignment. But you want to take your big thumb here, slide the tube all the way up so it's about a thumb away from the bracket and the mirror. And we'll go ahead and hook up the water line. This is the water discharge. You want this tube to be straight up and down, going down. It does, it'll, this is the hottest point of the laser. This tube going straight up and down, and it'll do a really good job keeping that cool. <clears throat> okay. We'll hook the water up to this side. Okay, so these hookups are a little slightly different than the Reese. Um, I'll show you how to do that in a minute. First, we want to put the good. And these don't need to be twisted the laser. Once we're done twisting the laser around, you can see this is really dirty. Once we're done twisting the laser around, we can go ahead and put these back, the mounting brackets back on. Okay, again, this is a cheap Chinese laser tube. I'm putting in my Rabbit USA laser. It is a 10 high brand, but most of the cheap Chinese brands install this way. I'll show you when I'm done with this how to appropriately set up a Reese tube as soon as we're done hooking this one up. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the ground line. Okay, I'm probably going to get a lot of crap for this for showing this to you, but I got my ground line. These are the ground lines, not the high, uh, high voltage line. And I just like to twist them. Normally with a Reese tube, I'll just go right up to here and uh, thread it right on. But like again, I'll show that to you with Reese tube. Twist them together, and then we'll stick a wire nut on. I'm switching this tube back out for a different one in about a week. So I want to be able to get it apart. This is the ground line. This is adequate. I've done it a lot. I have not had an issue. I'm not saying it's completely safe, but uh, that's how I'm doing this temporary hookup. Now the um, high voltage line. Get yourself a piece of surgical hose, because this is like 10,000 volts, guys. This is a lot. And it can arc. I've had them arc three, four, five inches away from the high voltage line. So I always take the take um, a piece of the surgical hose, slide it over, wherever it is. The surgical hose, slide it over your high voltage line before you hook it up. Find your other high voltage line. This one's from the laser tube. This one's from the laser. And again, I'm temporarily hooking this up. So I'm just going to tell you what you'd want to do. I'm going to twist them together like I did the ground line. At this point, you would want to solder this. I'm not going to solder this. This is a temporary hookup for me. So I'm going to pull this straight, bend this over. And then I'm going to take high voltage tape, not masking tape, I'm sorry, not electrical tape, high voltage tape. And I'm going to wrap it around the connection. Then we're going to take the surgical hose which you should have some of this if you run on a laser. This is the same hose you use for your coolers to hook up your water. And I'm just going to bring it over top of the other side. You want to overhang it about three inches both sides. You really ought to have a, a line going all the way back to your power supply like I do. But, and then that seam, I'm going to go ahead and just wrap it with uh, high voltage tape because that's what's in my hand, but you could use electrical tape at this point. All right, so I'm buying a Reese tube, which is actually a decent tube. At 10 high is a decent tube, but this particular one, they only go up to an 85 watt max. The Reese tube's 80 watt low, 100 watt max. Uh, that's really what I'm used to using, so that's why I do that. Uh, the 10 high is a perfectly fine tube. You can use that, but it's going to be a little underpowered. Uh, and e in either instances, uh, none, no company is going to honor their warranty for longevity of their laser tubes. I've gone to major companies and one year warranty goes bad in three months and they, I, you're going to fight them tooth and nail. The warranties are no good so just get a cheap tube and put it in and expect to get 
three months to a year out of your tube. You're not going to get much more than that unless you're just using this as a hobby. My Reesey tube here I've ran for roughly eight months now. Let's see. I've had it for a year, so I bought it and then let it set for a couple of months, or, they, or the company let it set for a couple of months, and then I uh, changed it out. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how what connections you would make on the Reesey, Reesey tube if you're going to change it out real quick. Okay, so this is your uh, hot side. You see there's just a screw here. So you just wrap your uh, high voltage to that. And it comes with a, uh, a silicone cap. So you would want to have your surgical hose come all the way up to here. Then put the screw in here. And then you can put the cap right on. Like that. And then on the ground side, you just put the screw in here and tighten the screw down on the wire. And that's really it. All right, it's time for a test fire. Let's see if it works. Okay, so I know you guys can see that, but I don't know if you guys can hear that. I'm gonna go ahead and risk my camera, my livelihood, if um, for you guys to hear it. Here we go. And that's what it looks like. Now we just need to check the alignment. Again, if you don't know how to do that, you check the video right up here. I'll go ahead and put that in this video three times to show you that as it's extremely important to uh, know how to align your uh, your mirrors. Well, you might ask the uh, whole power supply situation. If it's the power supply, the laser tube, or wires they're about is arcing out somewhere. Um, I'll show you the general whereabouts of how I know my laser tube's going bad. I'm having to continue to find myself to slow down the laser or crank up the power to get it cut through something that used to be able to cut through relatively easy. See, and that results in a double cut, and a double cut makes it really nasty. You don't want a double cut. If it was cutting this, this at 65% um, power and 20 millimeters a second, and I'm down to 70% power, 16% uh, or 16 millimeters a second and it's still not quite cutting through so that's one good indication that there's a problem it could be your mirrors out of alignment I'm not going over that on this video I'll just put a link up here where I showed you how to adjust your mirrors and it could also be your laser lenses are dirty or your mirrors are dirty again there's a video up here to show you how to do that but for now I'm just going to show you how to replace the laser tube so I'll show you my number one indicator of losing power I put a blocker here with a piece of wood on it. You guys don't really need to do that. I'm just going to be pulsing this a few times for the video's sake. And I don't want a bunch of stuff to fall down into my clean mirrors and lenses that I just cleaned. So what I would do is take a probably 10 layers of masking tape, just this clear, cheap stuff. About 10 layers and put it right over here. Okay? And then we'll do a real quick pulse. And listen. You see the smoke? That shouldn't have smoked. That should have had a flame. That flame should have came out and went whoosh, and it came up, and you should have heard the whoosh. Whoa! I don't know if it actually got that smoke ring, but if it did, it'd be really cool to slow that down, show it to you. That's a good indication of your laser tubes going to bad, if it doesn't whoosh on that masking tape. Uh, and then if you have to slow down your cuts more than normal or if you have to heat it up more than normal on your percentage of usage of your power. Now, one of the ways to go about if it's your power supply versus your laser is I like to go down the power supply, have somebody pulse the power supply, and you just listen. You'll hear a high-pitched squeal inside your power supply. And that's arcing between the two, trans the, um, that's arcing between the two transformers in there. And uh, that's a really good indication that it's no good. It could be doing that and it's only giving so much power out to the laser tube, so it's making your laser tube come under power. If it's not doing that, I'll replace the laser tube. However, if you're running these things all the time, I would highly suggest that you get yourself a power supply, extra power supply, and an extra laser tube. I have four machines here. They're all 80 watt machines, and I have an extra power supply and an extra laser tube sitting here at my shop, so I can replace them on demand. Or you could take the power supply and replace it. It's not the bad. Guess what? That's going to be the laser tube. It could also be the wiring in and out. So if it's, you'll hear that arcing and that electrical noise that you should not normally be hearing, and there'll be burn marks somewhere. So you can trace the wire back 
it sees there's a burn mark in your wire. It's going to be in the uh, red wire on the laser too. I say red, like I mean normally red, but it'll be on the high, the high voltage side of the laser. If it's going to be arcing somewhere, that's where it's going to be. So trace that wire back, see if you see any burn marks. If you got a burn mark on that, you're losing power, so it's not sending all the power to the tube. So you got yourself a bad, uh, a bad wire. So I happen to know it's a tube, so I'm actually you guys have already seen me replace it because I'm going to put this video in the end of the video. I myself, I'm ready for a test run. I'm going to see how this thing cuts. <sighs> I pray it cuts this plywood. Now I don't have to wait on my Reese tube. All right, guys. I'm Jay. This is my list. Thanks for stopping.